Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner. Before we get started, I wanna give a huge shout out to Son of a Tech. Yes, I have an addiction. So we're gonna get the dopamine flowing shortly, but first, let's spin that intro. Yeah, so we're back and yeah, we got another solo miner. This time we picked one up from Timu. We picked up a Bitcoin solo miner from Timu. We're gonna unbox this thing. We're gonna go over the specs, the features, profitability, ROI, whether or not you should buy it, all those fun nerdy numbers. But uh, without further ado, you're probably asking, what's in the box? Oh, what's in the you box? know what time it is, baby. RGB knife. <laughs> Engage never gets old. All right, so let's open this thing up and we're gonna talk all about it. And of course, all those nerdy numbers, all that fun stuff. And we're gonna get set up and mining because yeah, of course we are. All right, so as you can tell from the box and the title and the thumbnail and all that fun stuff, it is the Lucky Miner. This is the LV06, which is actually two generations back now. Um, but we got this really cheap. We're gonna talk about how much we paid for it and whether or not it's worth it. But for now, the first unboxing. So we open it up and right inside, we've got our manual sitting right on the top. We've got a little piece of foam and then we've got it packed fairly well in there. Um, it's the miner up here, right here. And then we've got our little power supply and our US type power cord dongle. So what is this thing? And uh, first and foremost, it is a Bitcoin solo miner, just like how do I keep breaking glass? So it's a Bitcoin solo miner, just like a Bitax, and it's actually very, very, very similar to Bitax. They use a very similar OS. It's actually the Axe OS that they kind of closed the open source and make it a closed source for themselves. Um, not sure that we agree with that, but we'll talk about that going forward. This is actually, um, here, we'll take a good close up look at it. Got a really nice little case on it. It's got the Bitcoin logo on the side. We got exhaust in. We've got our power supply input, our serial number on the back. It says uh, warning, don't touch hot things basically. Um, here's our little power supply, five volt, six amp. So it is an upgraded power supply, so that's nice. Um, and there's our cord and that's everything in the box. So next let's talk about how much we paid. We got it from Timu, right? We got it from Timu, which is Pretty wild to think that you can get a Bitcoin miner on Timu. Um, so how much did we pay? So this thing was listed on Timu for $85.75 with free shipping from this seller. Um, what did I pay for? We actually paid $69.68, that's counting shipping, tax, and all that straight to door. Um, we have, of course, used one of the Timu patented $20 coupons to get it down to $70. Um, so now let's let's talk about what's what's under the hood. What is this thing? First and foremost, it's built on the BM1366 ASIC chip, the amp miner. I believe it's an S21 chip. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. It's the same chip that is used in a Bitax Ultra. And we'll, we'll compare those a little bit more here in a little bit. So that means that it will hash up to 500 giga hash and that it states that it only uses 13 watts um, total. It comes with a five volt, six amp power supply, which is actually way above what you would need for this size. Um, this would actually probably run a Bitax Gamma without any hitches. So next, let's talk about the features of this thing. So first and foremost, it runs on a modified version of Axe OS. Again, same thing that the Bitax runs out of or any of the Bitax variants. It's kind of the same exact firmware with their own tweak that they've kind of closed the open source, which agree with it, hate it, love it, whatever. That's what they're doing. They're basically taking the open uh, firmware and they're closing it and making it their own and hey that's that's dog eat dog world right 
The power supply is upgraded compared to what this probably requires, so that's a nice quality of life improvement. It uses the little brick style mid uh, power supply, which is always much better in my opinion. They usually, for one, it makes it a lot easier to plug in multiple devices since you're using a standard plug. Um, and two, these usually have much more tolerance um, and uh, are much more beefier and have better internals. Not always, but usually. So again, going back to the low power usage, this is a pretty fairly efficient chip. It's not as efficient as some of the newer models, but it's super efficient and it only uses 13 watts for stock setting. Okay, so now that we've went over the specs and features, let's get this thing set up in mining. And then of course, we'll talk about the cost comparison and whether or not you should buy these and all that fun stuff. So. Without further ado, the setup, the, let's talk about physical setup. Physical setup is pretty easy. This thing runs off of Wi-Fi, so you're not plugging it into Ethernet. There's no inputs on this thing at all other than just a 5.5 millimeter barrel jack connector. Um, so yeah, physical setup, we're gonna plug this in, we're gonna plug this in and fire it up, go. All right, let's do this initial boot and see if this thing explodes. All right, we're powered on. I feel the fan right off the bat blowing out. This is a nice design because it kind of pulls in here and exhausts out the side. Um, and now it's saying connected to SSID. And then it says my specific lucky SSID. So how you set this up or any bit axes. And if you want to go into further detail, check out my full setup guide on the bit axe. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, we're going to use a mobile device of any sort. In this case, we're going to use the phone. We're going to connect to this wireless network, which again is lucky underscore, and then you'll have a specific number after that. And then we're going to... So now I'm searching my Wi-Fi networks, and then if I scroll down, I see lucky underscore. This one's E825. I'm going to connect to it. And then once I connect to it, then I will open a browser. I should be able to go to 192.168.4.1, open up the uh, website, the GUI for this, which is again, a modified AxOS. We'll go into the network setting tab. We're going to connect, put in our SSID for our wireless network with our password. Then we're going to go down to the uh, configuration, the settings tab. We're going to put in our pool, the pool that we're going to mine to the port for that pool our bitcoin address dot our worker name which we're just going to name lucky miner lv06 and then we will put password x we'll put that um, and then you can put a roll rollover pool but we're going to use the same pool for all three just to get it going and then we're going to save and reboot when it reboots it'll disconnect from our phone we'll disconnect from this wi-fi this will connect to our new wireless which is our home wi-fi network reboot and it should start hashing away. Then after that, the fun can start. You can go into the overclocking. If you need to know how to overclock, check out our video up above. We're not gonna do all that live. We're just gonna go ahead and get it set up. We'll talk about any pitfalls we have and come right back. Ready, go. Boom, just like that, we are up in hashing, baby. So it was a pretty simple, easy setup. Again, we just connected the Wi-Fi. Um, it's a slightly different from the Bidax in the fact that there's not a separate network tab um, compared to your settings tab. So you just go under settings and then under your settings, that's where you will put in your network SSID, your password. Um, and then of course you'll put in your pool, your pools port that you're mining to, your uh, Bitcoin address dot your worker name. Um, again, I used LV, uh, Lucky Miner LV06 for this one. And then it took a little while since this is a lower hash rate for it to actually show up on my pool, but it is hashing away now. I do have some statistics on here. I have eight accepted shares after about 10 minutes. Um, the power usage on this thing is showing 20 watts in the software, but it's showing 26.5 at the wall. So a little bit more power usage than advertised, um, of course. Then the hash rate, which is the most important thing. I'm currently at 612 giga hash, but it has been bouncing from about 480 up to 612. So somewhere in between there's probably the average. It's probably mining around 550 if I would let it go for a long-term sample. So yeah, now it's down to 608. Um, what's it showing on the device itself? It is showing nine minutes uptime, 612 giga hash. Uh, watts per terahash is 33. So it's efficient, but not nearly as efficient as say a Bidax Gamma. 
Um, so let's, this thing takes a little while to cycle to the next screen too. So that, that kind of bug, that really bugs me when I'm kind of impatient. So yeah, fan 56, 30 RPM temp, internal temp. The ASIC temp itself is 66 C, which is a little toasty, but the ambient temperature in here is probably near 80 Fahrenheit currently. Um, plus we were blocking the exhaust by having it up like that. So you really should have it this way so that you get better exhaust. Um, but then your screen sideways, so that kind of bothers me too. So you gotta have it, you gotta have it this way, but then your screen is this way instead of this way. Little, little nuance. Okay, yeah, so we are share, showing shares on the pool for us. We actually added this to our CK pool collection. This will be the fifth one that we added to CK pool. Um, fifth different variant of Bidax and Lucky Miner and Solo Miner. Yeah, I, I definitely have a problem. That's just on that one pool, so. Maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe you're right, uh, son of a tech. Maybe I do have an issue. Okay, a quick caveat. This thing is uh, has a little bit more volume than, say, a Bidax Ultra or Bidax Super or really even a Bidax Gamma on a normal uh, clock. It, it has a little bit of sound, and that's because of the cool case, which is neat, but at the same point, this is causing restriction in the airflow that's pulling in because it's got a fan pulling directly in here and then it comes out here. But this is making a little bit of extra decibels. It's not loud, but it's loud enough to where it's noticeable. So if you have this on a desk right beside you, you might not appreciate the Lucky Miner compared to, say, a Bidax uh, Ultra. So here, listen. So yeah, you, you can definitely hear, you can hear this guy. It makes a, it makes an audible decibel. Okay, so now we have our decibel meter. Let's take a good close up listen to this guy. And again, it's using my phone's mic, so it's not the most accurate, but it's better than having nothing. So around 75 decibels, whereas say the uh, Nano 3, whereas like the Nano 3 is showing about 52 decibels on this app. so. That's just something to keep in mind. All right, so let's go some over some nerdy numbers and of course talk about the price and the comparison and whether or not you should buy this and where you should buy this. So again, this cost me about $70. So $70 for this coming from China, from overseas. So how much can you expect to pay for these? If you go to cooldragon.io, which again, not affiliated, not a sponsor, I believe they sponsor Red Panda. These cost $140. Please don't pay $140 for one of these. Other places, Timu, AliExpress, you can get these for only 70 bucks, shipped to door. And that's actually, some of these have a pretty fairly quick turnaround because they'll have US distributors. So 70 bucks to door. That's what you should pay for these. Don't expect to pay or do not pay more than that. So since these use the same BM1366 chip, it's the same thing as a Bitax Ultra. So if you can get a Bitax Ultra for near the same price, I highly advise go for the Bitax Ultra um, since they are constantly updated on the firmware. That being said, I'm seeing these for around $100 to $120, the BitX Ultra at most places like Bitcoin Merch is $120, um, Decentral, which has a lot of custom options and cool things, they're $137 US for a BitX Ultra. So would I advise to pay $120 or $137 for an Ultra or pay $70 for one of these? Yeah, if you're looking to get in the game and you're not going for the highest, um, highest price, highest quality. This is a great entry point at 70 bucks to get yourself up and mining. And yeah, it's it's got half the chance of a Bitax Ultra or a Bitax Gamma, but it costs half the price of a Bitax Gamma. So if you're wanting to get your foot in the door, you're wanting to get started, this might be a great alternative that doesn't cost you much and is not using much power. It's using currently 23 watts at the wall, um, easy peasy setup and Feasibly, these things should just set up and mine and mine and you shouldn't have to touch them other than maybe if they get froze or if like the Wi-Fi sticks or something like that to reboot them, let them reconnect to your Wi-Fi, let them get hashing away again. Now, what about the ROI time? Will these ever pay for themselves? 99% chance, no. You'll probably never hit a Bitcoin block. The chance is really small, but there is a chance. There is a chance that someday you wake up and you hit a block and you get 3.125 Bitcoin and you're going yippee yippee. 
before all the naysayers flood the comments, it's happened. It's happened twice in the past year on a small Bitax Ultra, Bitax Super, Bitax Super hit one, and I believe a Bitax Gamma hit one. There were two blocks definitely hit in the last year that are known, that are out there in the ether that people know for sure hit a Bitcoin block. And say a Bitcoin block is back up to 100,000, that's $312,500. You see that math? That's math, that's math, that's math, baby. So should you buy these? I don't know. I, I personally love the technology. I love the, just the hardware itself. This one, you can still, you can go in and overclock and you can tweak it the same as the Super. You can change the, or same as the Gammas and the bit axes. You can change the frequency and you can change the voltage. You can pump a little bit of extra power in here because these aren't even coming close to maxing out this power supply. So yeah, you can bump these up uh, five watts more, 10 watts more, bump that frequency up. Try to see how much hash rate you can hit and still stay stable because that's the key you want to keep it stable you want to keep it running for that elongated chance down the road that maybe you'll hit a bitcoin block what about you what are your thoughts on this miner specifically do you think these are junk do you think that all solo miners are junk have you bought a, a lucky miner variant or a bit axe variant tell us your thoughts your opinions down below that's that's what's important man it's about the community I think that about wraps it up for today. I think we're going to, uh, I think that should pacify our uh, solo mining addiction for this week. Maybe, maybe it does. Then again, maybe not. If you're new to mining and you need some help, make sure to join the Misfit Mining Discord. Always plenty of seasoned vets in there willing to help you out. And if you like the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride. You know what time it is, baby, RGB knife.